This is my Super Nintendo collection. Why is there a pink cart? As you can clearly see, I don't talk behind a wall of games because I don't have a wall of games. I do have probably more games than I thought I did, admittedly. Now, I don't keep them in a very special place. I don't have them on a shelf. I just keep it in one of these, you know, Walmart drawer thingies, and I just pulled the whole drawer out, put them in here. That's enough to fit all the Super Nintendo games I own. And even this many is more than I need. But I haven't looked through this in a long time, so like I did the Nintendo collection that I had, um, let's go through this and see what I have, and maybe there's something in here. I mean, I know I have some good games in here, but there's also like some, like, you have that, really? Now this aside, because I just keep this in here, the Super Game Boy, I also have other Super Famicom games. I'm not gonna include those in this video. You know, like the Crayon Shinchons, you know, and like the Fire Pro series when I was collecting all the wrestling games, you know. I only have one CIB game, and that is Lagoon. I am more nostalgic for Lagoon than I am Zelda Link to the Past because this came out before Link to the Past, so this was like the only Legend of Zelda type game for the Super Nintendo uh, when it first came out. I still think it's a really, really fun game. Your sword is super short, but still a fun game. This, the music is super nostalgic for me too. I'm already looking in here and there's like, yeah, there's, I mean, yeah, there's some cool games and everything, but realistically, am I ever going to play them ever again? And again, the fact that I have like a Mr. and Raspberry Pis and stuff like that too, and EverDrive, you're actually probably gonna see some of these pop up on Whatnot later on. And if you don't have the Whatnot app, use my link in the description below. You'll get 10 bucks off your first thing from me. In no particular order, Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy 3. Of course, you know what best is Final Fantasy 6. Super fun. I prefer Final Fantasy 2, and I'm sure I have Final Fantasy 2 in here somewhere as well. There's Contra 3. Um, I like Contra 3. Even still has the old uh, rental sticker on there, too. More often than not, I mean, especially if it's on the label, if it has a rental sticker, I just leave it on there. I think it's kind of fun to see the journey it came from. Oh, yeah. Gotta have Secret of Mana, right? I like this game a lot. Love the soundtrack. I've never beaten it because it just, um, it just gets boring after a while. I mean, probably not to you too. Maybe, I don't know. It was during a time, this came out during a time in high school when I was going through a lot of medical problems and medication changes. My body's chemistry was changing and stuff like that because of those meds and because they killed my thyroid with my, uh, I have Graves disease. I had a overactive thyroid and it just seems like the, the, the dungeons and stuff were like just the same over and over again. I mean, you can say that about any game really, but I don't know. I just couldn't focus. Huh. Well, we have Ogre Battle. It's a game I admittedly haven't put a lot of effort into. I know a lot of people really dig this game. It was an ex-Blockbuster rental here. I think it was around when they were liquidating their Super Nintendo stock to make room for, like, newer consoles. Like, Nintendo 64 was already there, and even though they had the 64, Super Nintendo was still renting, but maybe when GameCube came in or something like that. Oh, yeah, classic. Zelda. Super Castlevania 4, fun one. It's the one that's Almost the least like a lot of other Castlevania games of all the Castlevania games, uh, but I still love it. It's its own thing. Yeah, not a lot of people talk about this one as much. Seventh Saga. I liked the fact that they had that map that you could see like where your enemies were, so you could try to kind of avoid them and everything, but fun RPG here. Uh, oh, here's a game that nobody's really talking about. I need to talk about Fire Striker more in my videos. It has that Zelda thing where you can slash your sword, but then it's also like a little bit like Arkanoid because the fireball is like hitting the bricks to go through to the next area and everything like that. Interesting one on this one. This was actually one I picked up recently too. I was happy to find this at, was it a convention or maybe it was a game store? I don't remember. I think it may have been a convention. I see, I see a sticker on top here, so it was probably at a convention. I need to watch my own videos. <laughs> I'm sure it's in one of those videos. Naturally gotta have a Mario World. This may not be my only Mario World in here yet too, I don't know. Some, sometimes I'll find like duplicates of games where it's like, why do I have a second one of those? <laughs> what do I have, babies, kids? This one star game, <laughs> I found it at a video store in California. I do remember where I picked this up and I was like, oh, I never see babies, kids out in the wild. I'll buy it for no reason. I probably paid 30 bucks or something like that for this one star game, but I was like, well, I never see it, so I'll grab it and I'll probably just put it on whatnot. I just haven't yet. All right, I only have a couple of hacks in here, believe it or not. This is the Earthbound Halloween hack. Now, before I get into the rest of the case, I do not have a legit copy of Earthbound. Every time I've gotten an Earthbound, I've had a few of them in the past, but every time I would get one, someone else would need it more than me for their collection, so and I have no problem trading it. I don't have that nostalgic vibe for Earthbound as many other people do, but the Earthbound Halloween hack is cool because it just makes it a little bit different and it's also where Toby Fox kind of got his start by doing, you know, now, you know, Undertale and stuff like that, but maybe it all started with that Halloween hack. Interesting to find out how many programmers today used to hack games back in the day. Ever hear Chrono Trigger? It's one I've been needing to beat. I've never beaten this game. Again, just like Secret of Mana, this came out a little bit later uh, and I was still going through all those chemistry body changes and stuff, so I couldn't hold my focus. I just, my attention wasn't there enough for this. I'm also not the biggest fan of like turn-based RPGs, so since this plays a little bit more like a turn-based RPG, like you still have to attack this person. If I could just run around and slash everything like Zelda, it'd probably be my favorite game of all time. I just haven't played all the way through it. And I don't mind, I mean like, you know, again, Final Fantasy, I've done that before. 
before. I just need to do that with that one sometime. Oh god. Th this copy came straight from the jungle, apparently. Look how filthy this cartridge is. <laughs> Donkey Kong Country. This actually may have been an open cart surgery game a while back. I might have to test these out to see if they still work. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll be an open cart surgery video again. To the best of my knowledge, I have all three Donkey Kong Country games, and I guess we're going to find out. Oh, uh, I forgot I had this. So this is Final Fight Guy. This is a legit version of it. I'm almost positive it's a legit version. The reason I'm surprised is like, how do you forget you have this? Well, what happened was this was a trade at the most recent Portland Retro Gaming Expo. Why are my hands not working? I got like willow pill hands. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, Final Fight Guy, it's legit. I knew it would be um, because I knew the source. My friend Tara uh, traded this to me at the Portland Retro Gaming Expo. They were like, hey, do you do trades? And I get that sometimes at conventions. And, um, you know, because sometimes people go to video game conventions and in lieu of bringing cash, they bring their tradable stuff. And my answer is usually like, I'm never looking for anything in particular, but I'm always happy to, always happy to hear them out because you never know. And Tara was just like, do you want a Final Fight Guy? I'm like, I wouldn't decline. So we made a trade, and uh, in return, I got a Final Fight guy. How awesome am I? I still play as Hagar in this game. <laughs> it's my favorite character. <laughs> Fun to have. I'm not married to it. It was, just, it, was a, it was a nice trade, and now I have this, and now I'll let it go to someone else. I'll, maybe I'll probably bring this to a convention as trade. Probably trade someone a box of, like, NES games or something that I can sell on whatnot, you know, just to make those whatnot streams last longer. Oh, my God. Best box art ever. Phalanx has such the greatest label art of all time. A little crack in the middle, though, and super dirty. And label art aside, which, of course, what drew me to it, it was like, ah, oh, it's amazing. Um, it's actually a really fun shooter, too, and I love shooters. Uh, super Nintendo shooters were, like... To me, some of the best. Everyone thinks about 16-bit, and they're like, yeah, platformers are great. Um, and 16-bit was like the epitome of, especially Super Nintendo era, JRPG scene, the role-playing scene, all the role-playing games that came out for the Super Nintendo, just epic, iconic, all these great games. Uh, to me, is all about those 16-bit shooters. They're just so good. Oh, it's another game I still need to go through. It sucks I was so sick during some of the best Super Nintendo games, Secret of Evermore. I've played a little bit of this, and I love it. And I just haven't played through it. I wish I wish I was... I wish I could have played this during its prime. I remember when it came out, and it looked so fun. It looked so cool. I played it a little bit, but I just never played through it. All right, working our way down here. Got the pink cart. There's going to be a couple of these kind of sprinkled within in this uh, box here. This pink cart is full of, what is it full of? Now this is a compilation collection. This is not an actual legit Super Nintendo game. Uh, this game from Retro Circuits has a lot of, it's, it's a comp, it, you pop it in there and it has like five or six games on here. I mean, maybe even like eight games or something like that. Um, I believe this one was a bunch of like anime style games that were translated and then just put onto a physical card. That's just one of the things that Retro Circuits does. Did? I think they still do. This, yeah, I mean, we gotta talk about this. Now again, this is a repro, obviously. This is Back to the Future 2, uh, but the good news is when you pop it in, this uh, light, uh, the, the flux capacitor actually lights up and everything. And it's just, it's just so well done here. I love this. I have a case for it too. I don't know why it's not in its case. Well, since we're here, let's get the other like kind of compilation collection stuff out of the way. There's a couple, I have a couple more. I don't know where they are. They're not in here though. I'll find them in a bit. Like there's this one that has Terra Enigma, EVO, and Soul Blazer. Yes, I know it should have included Illusion of Gaia, uh, but I love these three games. And this one's kind of fun too. It's just like, it's the Donkey Kong Country games and the Mario games, just kind of all in the same cart. Actually, I think it's just Mario All-Stars, Mario World and Donkey Kong Country 1, 2, and 3. There's no Yoshi's Island, which is fine. All right, back to the legit stuff. Oh, see? And here you go, Soul Blazer right here, one of my favorites. Loved this game. This is another game. I've been meaning to go through it again. I just, like everything else, haven't. Here's a converter. It goes from a USB standard to a HDMI mini. Okay. Ripped label, but Sky Blazer. I purchased this at the Portland Retro Gaming Expo, I think 2015. 14? No, it had to, had to have been either 2015 or 2016. I got a good deal on this. I didn't have a copy of Soul Blazer. Um, love the game. It's a great platformer, but it just, I didn't have a copy of it. And they had that with a rip label for cheaper. So I was like, oh, perfect. I'll take it. Secret of Evermore. Do I have another one? Oh, look at this. Yeah, I had another copy of Secret of Evermore. Um, I'm sure I had one of them to begin with, and I'm sure I got another one in a trade where somebody was like, hey, I have these games for trade. I was like, okay, so yeah, one, one of these will be popping up on whatnot soon <laughs> after I clean them and test them and all that. Uh, Imperium. It's another game I'm sure I got in a trade. It still has the uh, sticker on there too. Actually, I think this is Jeremy Weaver's sticker. I bet I got this game from him. In fact, I may have traded this game in the first place and I got it back. I don't know. We, we, you, do, you do a lot. You just like end up trading games back and forth. And... I don't know. Oh, it's always worth having a copy of Breath of Fire 2. Another great RPG here. Again, I know it's funny. I keep saying like, I don't care for those turn-based RPGs. 
but they're so good. <laughs> they always have the best music. This came from Four Star Video. Four Star Video from uh, Terrace Heights right here in Yakima, Washington. I um, I never went to this video store. Um, I never I never went to Terrace Heights. It's it's on the outskirts of town, just out just uh, east of Yakima. Um, and I never really went there. I didn't have a reason, reason to go there. Oh, this is the greatest hits version of Super Mario World. I think I found this at a flea market or something. Not a flea market, like a yard sale, estate sale, something. And I just ha still have it. No reason to still have it. I just happen to have it. Ah, oh, how awesome is the Lost Vikings? Great music, great puzzle game. If you're a fan of Blizzard, this was like an early, an earlier Blizzard game. Super Nintendo Blizzard game, I guess. I think you'd consider that a Blizzard game, right? A Capcom game I don't think gets enough love, Goof Troop. I'm a huge fan of Goof Troop. Played a ton of this. It was one of those like, oh, it's a Disney game. I'll just rent a game. I don't know. This looks okay. It looks cartoony, whatever. Um, and I really found myself really liking it. So it's just one of those... Gotta have it, man. Glad I rented it, or else I, I probably wouldn't have purchased it if I didn't rent it first. That might be a topic for a video later. For being a kid's game, The Lion King sure is hard. And not just the double jump stage. Um, it's a lot longer of a game than you anticipate. It's, it has a higher difficulty level than it should. Yeah, as I figured. Yet another copy of Mario World. All right, we're getting down to just a few of them left. <laughs> I got all the wrestling games. Well, not all the wrestling games, but... All right, so we got Super WrestleMania. As limited as this game is, I played a ton of it because that's all we had at the time, right? I played the Royal Rumble far more. Just had more wrestlers to choose from at the time, and you had a Royal Rumble matchup, so my friend and I would just... It's funny, as a wrestler is running on this game, if you do like a hip a hip toss, you'll send them out of the ring. So my friend and I would stand on both corners of the ring, and as soon as they walk in, we'd Irish whip them, the other person would just hip lock them or hip toss them out of the ring. <laughs> That'd just be an attitude to the two of us. WWF Raw. Most people prefer this over Royal Rumble. I still prefer Royal Rumble. Again, a fine wrestling game. It's very, very similar. It has some different moves. And uh, it also had, like, unique moves, like, that you couldn't pull off in real life. It's kind of weird. I also have WrestleMania, the arcade game. This is when it just got cartoony. Uh, the Super Nintendo version does not include Bam Bam or Doink. Yeah, maybe this one doesn't include Yokozuna and Bam Bam Bigelow. Because I see uh, Lex Luger and Doink on the, uh, in the arcade itself. I don't remember. I, I mostly played this on the PlayStation 1, but I just, you know, have the Super Nintendo version too. Had to get all the wrestling games. Pilot Wings, love this game, played it so much. Don't really need to go on there. I just love that game. Kirby's Dream Course, a game I still come back to every once in a while. It's like mini golf, but with Kirby. How can you go wrong? <sighs> Another game I need to come back to. Good lord. It's like I got my eyesight all over again. Illusion of Gaia. So much Gaia, it still has literal dirt earth on here, apparently. <laughs> Stickers that are removed. How do games get this dirty? Well, I don't know. It's Like I said, it still works. It's just... There's a sticker on the back, probably from a rental or something. Another game I need to go through. I got, I played about maybe halfway through, probably six years ago or so, and I really, really enjoyed it. And then that's right when like another game came out that just kind of took over my life. That happened to you too. Actraiser is probably my favorite Super Nintendo game of all the Super Nintendo games. Love that one. Oh man, huge fan of Demon's Crest as well. Great game here, love this one. Ah, oh, I knew I'd have it. Yep, Final Fantasy II, my favorite. My favorite of all the Final Fantasy games. I mean, it was a rental. But it's Legend of the Mystical Ninja. I love this game. The first game I ever purchased. Actually, it's the first game my mom ever purchased for me. But the first game I got outside of the pack in Mario World uh, was when we went to the store. I think it was my birthday. And instead, instead of just like, you know, hey, like pick a game or anything, she was just like, well, any two games. I was like, oh my God. Um, so this one I already rented, I loved it, so I grabbed this one. And then the second game was Brawl Brothers from Jalico because it looked like Final Fight, but it was two players simultaneous, where Final Fight wasn't. And I'm happy with those purchases. I'm happy with those two being my first two games. But Mystical Ninja is still one of my favorites. You find a random Game Boy game in here, Mel Mole Mania. <laughs> it's probably in here because I had that super adapter or whatever. And my Super Nintendo Junior, I opened up to remove the uh, the protection thing. And then so I can put it back in there so I can, my, my Super Nintendo Junior plays both Nintendo or Super Nintendo and Super Famicom because I removed that part that kind of prevents it from doing that. You can do that if you just open it up. Dragon View is another game that not a lot of people talk about. There's so many great Kimco games for the Super Nintendo. I got to do a ranking video sometime soon. And that's it. Those are my Super Nintendo games. But you don't have to have a lot of games to have a collection of any kind. I did the same thing for my Nintendo collection. If you want to see what games I just still kept from my Nintendo collection back when I, I almost had, I was going for a full set. And then while I was like, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna get a full set. I'll just keep the games that are sentimental to me and then let the rest of them go. And then even going back through the box, there's a lot of those games. It's like, I don't even need these ones either. So check out that video in the meantime. Thanks for watching. And if you have a convention coming to your town or near you, uh, maybe I'll be there, you never know.